In this video, we're going to look at water and waste inside cells. We're going to look at why cells need water inside them uh, and why we need to balance the amount of water inside cells. We're going to look at the production of waste in cells and why the removal of that waste is necessary. So firstly, water is an excellent solvent. All the substances in our body are dissolved in the water, and it's only because they're dissolved in the water that the reactions are able to happen. So this, when something's dissolved in water, we say it is aqueous, and it's only because they're aqueous that they've got that freedom to actually move around and for these reactions to occur. If the nutrients weren't dissolved in water, so they weren't aqueous, uh, the metabolism would not be able to occur and remembering metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that are occurring in the body. But in saying that we need water, we don't want too much water and the amount of water that we want is the amount that keeps the cells isotonic with their environment. And isotonic means that there's the same concentration of water and solutes inside the cell as there is outside the cell. Now, if, they, if the concentration goes outside of these ranges, uh, this can cause problems within the cell, uh, so causing it to either shrivel up or explode, as well as causing those reactions that are occurring, uh, the metabolism, to not be able to occur as well. So we need the balance of water to be kept just right with inside the cells. Okay, wastes are produced through metabolic function, so as the reactions in the body are occurring, they're producing wastes. Now the majority of those wastes, or not the majority, but the bad ones in the waste are the nitrogenous wastes, the nitrogen containing wastes. And if these wastes are allowed to build up, they actually will slow down the metabolism and eventually poison the cells. So they'll uh, denature the enzymes that are in there and therefore these metabolism is going to stop and that's not good if you're trying to have cells in your body that function. So we need to remove this waste. Now the problem with nitrogen is that it's fairly reactive uh, and is also very very polar. So that when proteins and especially uh, a lot of proteins, amino acids, have uh, nitrogen in them. So when they break down, they've got the nitrogen. That nitrogen picks up a couple of hydrogens and be gets into the form of ammonia. Now we need to either quickly, very quickly get this ammonia out of the body or we need to convert it into something less harmful. Uh, so what we do in our bodies is we convert that ammonia into urea. Urea is not as polar, it's a bigger molecule, so it's not as reactive, uh, and that can then be stored in the body. Uh, fish, for example, uh, because they don't store any of their nitrogenous waste in the body, they actually excrete ammonia, and that comes straight out of them. While lizards, on the other hand, excrete uric acid, which is going the next step and turning that urea into an even bigger molecule and an even safer molecule to keep inside them. But as far as humans go, uh, and all mammals in, uh, actually, uh, we convert that ammonia very quickly into urea, and then we still need to get that urea out of the body, but it's not as urgent as if it was ammonia. So in this video, we've talked about the need of water and the need for an aqueous solution of all the reactants and products for metabolism to occur and needing that balance of the solute and solvent being the water within the cells so that that cell is isotonic to its environment. We talked about the production of nitrogenous wastes through the breakdown of amino acids and proteins uh, and general metabolism. And we've talked about why it's important to remove those nitrogenous wastes or convert it to something less harmful and then remove it.